bro, then why fix it? I've been doing this for 12 years, and what I've been doing has been a continuous thing. It's been consistent, and I've been giving the fans what they want to see, and that's knockouts. How many more fights are you looking at in your career? How many more fights I'm looking at? Who knows? But I can tell you I'm, I'm here for only six more years. You know, I think six more years, that will put me at the age of 40. And I think around about that time that I should have everything that uh, I've seeked out to have, you know, not only inside of the ring, but on the outside of the ring as well. You know, it's very important for me to have a structure, a foundation to build, build something outside of the ring due to the fact that this boxing, it's a very dangerous sport. You know, you just never know when the last Remember how, like, um, just a couple of weeks ago, I was saying, like, where's the content? Where's the Wilder Fury built-up content? Why don't I feel overwhelmed? Well, it's everywhere. I've been watching Wilder Fury shit. Like, Wilder's been on Rome. He's been on Speak for Yourself. Um, Kevin Ioli. BT Sports is releasing stuff with Ben Davison um, um, and David Hay. I watched that yesterday. You know, them breaking down the fight. This right here. Yo, it's a lot, especially in the digital in the digital market. Anyway, um, I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. Here's some interesting big news that the details came out about. Now, Bob Arum had a chance to talk to um, um, AK and Barack via the Sirius XM radio. You know what? Fuck it. I've been thinking about for like the last six months of getting serious um xm radio again but i was like yo they motherfuckers is like 40 dollars a month last time i checked right i think i'm gonna get that especially since i'm on the road a lot more even though i know i got my ipads and my phones still my car is equipped with this type shit but anyway bob burham had talked to ak and barack crazy i just chilled with them a couple of weeks ago at um the uh jake rock rosario fight so we've been hearing for quite some time that the contract for wilder versus fury is for already signed two fights for 2020 meaning the rematch and the third fight will already be set no matter who wins or who loses but we find out here that it's up to the loser to be like no i don't want the smoke no more i don't want the the third fight so here let me read this to you from um they typed this up uh, on uh world boxing news so I imagine this is going to hit other websites soon. And this is a type of content where this is when, you know, like I'm supposed to have Sirius XM radio, especially for about for all the boxing shows. So, you know, I have Showtime. I have even still HBO. Well, I got them for the shows. You know, ESPN Plus, The Zone. I buy fights on Fight TV. I covered Trout on the Impact Network. So anything related to boxing, I like to have. So therefore, I'm able to give you guys audio clips and shit like that. So this is what Bob Burns said. The contract now states, so the, what did they change? Rectifying terms of the existing contract, which WB has explained in detail previously. Fury firstly has to beat Wilder well enough for the American to walk away from the stipulated trilogy. This is a quote from Bob Barham. The contract now states that the loser of the fight, Wilder versus Fury 2, can demand a third fight, but has to take then take 40%, Aram explained on the AK and Barack show via Sirius XM Radio. That makes sense though, right? The winner of the second fight gets 60%, but it's up to the loser to pull the plug for the second rematch, he stressed. Asked whether Wilder, asked whether Fury does beat Wilder, would he be looking to fight Anthony Joshua? Aaron, Aaron said Pulev, secondly, would put it into those thoughts. Basically, I guess he's saying that Pulev is going to beat Joshua. By the way, also news is coming out that Joshua will be able to keep his WBO and IBF titles, but his obligations for 2020 will be Pulev first, which can be announced any day now for possibly late May or June. And then he would have to fight um, his man other mandatory, Alexander Usyk, if Alexander Usyk still holds that status, who's supposed to be fighting uh, Derek Chisora sometime in March. But remember, we all know, or at least boxing fans, that if Joshua were to beat Pulev, and whoever wins between Wilder versus Fury, let's say Wilder keeps his belts, even though I think Tyson Fury is going to win, let's say Wilder keeps his belts, then both of them, unless Fury says, no, I want that rematch, you know, nothing's going to stop an undisputed, you know, negotiates for an undisputed fight. You know, 
a unification, especially if undisputed, will trump all mandatories. So, you know, that's just, but they're predicting for the fight that 2 million pay-per-view buys, man. 2 million pay-per-view buys. It's seventy nine ninety nine here in the States. Over there in the UK, you guys are getting it on BT Sport. You can buy it here um, and on ESPN Plus over the next couple of days. Here it is, $79.99. Over the next couple of days, I'm going to be going to um, um, over on ESPN Plus and seeing like what their content is because they got to step it up in my opinion. I cover every single episode of all the TV content. I have an episode of a PBC, um, well, Wilder vs. Fury countdown to do. So it's just content all over the place. And right now, February the 4th, where you know, what, 18 days away from the fight or some shit like that. The undercard is a featuring, uh, even though BoxRec hasn't updated it yet. I'm going to put the information down below in the description box. It's featuring Gerald Washington. Well, the Prince, excuse me, former IBF heavyweight champion, Charles Martin versus Gerald Washington. You're going to have Emmanuel Navarrete, WBO 122-pound champion versus WBO. From my last rankings, fifth-ranked. WBO contender Gio Santissima, the six foot five, um, towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora, 154 pound against Daniel Lewis. And then there's even talk of Big Baby Miller being on the undercard in some capacity. Crazy, right? So overall, I understand why the um, undercard is, you know, what it is and it's not expensive. I mean, and it's, um, it's not like a good, it's not a good undercard. Fuck it. Fuck it, right? But when you have these fighters making so much money and you have the, the amount of promotion, remember promotion costs money. People got to be paid from the production people, the analysts, all that shit. You know, so when they do that press conference in Fox Studios, people got to get paid. You know, when they put that uh, 15 second Wilder Fury Super Bowl spot, you know, people got, in fact, let's do a little jump cut. Let's go see if I can find that for you. Let's see if they uploaded that. Be right back. Don't you know they really made me go to some off-brand shit. So basically, this is what I do. I type in Wilder Fury 2 Super Bowl spot. And you would think that they would have this shit up somewhere, right? Right? But no. And I didn't feel like going through my DVR. So here it is. This is the one they aired during the uh, Super Bowl. That cost, um, what? Um, what is it? A 30-second spot cost 5.6 million or some shit? Uh, I, I think I saw in the news. Or is it a 15 second spot? Well, this is 30 second. So remember, this all costs money. So these people are predicting, you know, at least Bob Behrman's went on a record to predict 2 million pay-per-view buys. I can't imagine how much all this promotion cost. Then you pay the fighters. Then the promoters got to make money. February 22nd. Buy it on pay-per-view or the Fox Sports app. The biggest fight in recent history. My bad. It pauses every time I uh, hit the, the scene. But basically, you know, the in theory, you know, the fight has been exposed to 100 million plus households or people. So they think like, oh, you know, those people are aware of the fight. But, you know, will all of this turn into pay-per-view buys? That's the fucking question. Will all of this turn into pay-per-view buys? And yes, here in the States, even though it doesn't, says ESP, it doesn't say ESPN Plus down there because this is a Super Bowl ad. And, of course, Fox was broadcast on, on a, the Super Bowl was broadcast on Fox. You see what I'm saying? We're going to see, though, because there's still so many things we need to know. Like, you know, I'm waiting for that press release of who is the broadcast team going to be. Since it's supposed to be a joint venture between ESPN and um, <coughs> ESPN, Top Rank, and Fox and PBC. Who's the broadcast team going to be? You know, who's going to be the judges? Who's going to be the referee? That's all quality content to put out right there. But anyway... I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. We cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe. I look, I look at him and I say, I'm going to give you the world. You know, and that's what I seek out to do. I, have a, I had an opportunity to break the chain for my family. An opportunity that my father didn't have, nor his father had for him. But I had that opportunity. I grabbed it and I ran with, with it. 
I've broken the chain. But not only I'm just going to settle for just breaking that chain, I'm going to go for the more and creating things for myself. That way my, my, my family, my children, and even their children's children could be able to live off the things that they, that they dad set for them.